Air pollution levels in China are often dangerously high. Concentrations of fine particulates, the most damaging form of air pollution for health, are often more than 10 times the level recommended by the World Health Organization. Pollution levels like what you see here in China are relatively common in many developing countries. This shows you premature mortality rates due to ambient air pollution around the world. Estimates are that about 4 million premature deaths occurred in 2012, according to the Global Burden of Disease Report. Most of these deaths, over 90%, occur in low and middle income countries. China has among the highest ambient air pollution concentrations in the world. Two months ago, I was in Beijing giving a talk at Tsinghua University, and these three professors insisted we put on face masks before heading out to dinner. China recognizes how health damaging its air pollution is, and it is very committed now to finding ways to reduce emissions and improve air quality. In addition to having terrible air pollution problems, China is also the largest emitter of carbon dioxide in the world. Currently, more than double U.S. emissions and triple the emissions from the European Union. You can see the emissions from China are beginning to flatten, and it looks highly likely that they will meet or exceed their commitment in the Paris Agreement to peaking CO2 emissions on or before 2030. I decided to reorient my research to looking at opportunities for co-benefits in mitigating air pollution and greenhouse gas emissions because there's many opportunities to do both things together, but there's also opportunities to do them independently, and sometimes there's perverse consequences of that. There's opportunities to increase efficiency of end-use processes, which therefore reduce emissions of air pollutants and carbon dioxide simultaneously, and to electrify particularly if that electrification happens with non-fossil fuels, you have co benefits for air quality and for climate. Transmission is a really important aspect of renewable generation and use because renewables are inherently intermittent. And China is now building long distance transmission lines that take power from Western China to the East, where the demand is higher, the pollution levels are higher, the exposure is higher. You see here fine particulate pollution coming from Stoves, which are used in residences, causing very high levels of indoor air pollution. Our recent research has shown that not only is it air pollution at the indoor level problematic, but this is contributing about 50% of fine particle pollution in winter in the provinces surrounding Beijing. Electrification of those stoves would virtually eliminate that pollution source. The way we do our analysis is we start with the current emissions, and then we look at various interventions and the emission reductions of air pollutants and greenhouse gases that can result. And then we use atmospheric models to simulate the air pollution reductions, and then we estimate the improvements in health and um, climate that result from those interventions. What we've found is that increasing efficiency of end-use processes in the industrial sector and putting end-of-pipe controls on a variety of different sources like the power sector and vehicles can reduce premature mortalities and CO2 emissions in China today. Technology is immediately available to do that. However, electrifying end-use applications like vehicles and those stoves can further reduce air pollution emissions and have large benefits for health. However, if that electrification is done with coal, it has relatively little benefits um, for climate and for CO2 mitigation. If that electrification occurs using renewable energy and that those transmission lines that are being built facilitate the transmission of that renewable energy from west to east, we find that if 50% of the stoves and 50% of the vehicles are electrified with 50% renewable energy, China would achieve a 10% improvement in reduction in premature mortality and a 25% reduction in carbon dioxide emissions. China is very committed to increasing its renewable energy generation. It's committed now $360 billion through the end of 2020 to renewable um, generation from like solar and wind. And they estimate that will generate about 13 million jobs in China over that time period. Renewable energy provides huge opportunities, not only in China, but around the world for reducing CO2 emissions and improving air quality. There's ample opportunities to provide electricity generation. There's challenges that still remain on storage and transmission, but we're seeing that there's breakthroughs coming down the pike um, in the next few years. There's opportunities here to turn the skies of, of Beijing from, from gray to blue and improve the global climate for everyone, both within China and um, around the world. Thank you.